This is Jim Smith with the next installment for the silage zone. Today I'm going to talk about fungicide for corn silage. And just right off the bat, I'm getting more and more convinced all the time that if it can be afforded by every dairyman, every acre of corn silage should probably receive a fungicide treatment. We'll talk a lot about that, but want to get started. So what are we really talking about? We're talking about why in corn silage. I'm going to try to show you some research that would demonstrate that value. Talk a little bit about active ingredients that you want to make sure are in your fungicide, about the timing of that application, and then if necessary, if the budget can't bear it, how we prioritize fields to get that done. So when we look at what we're up against with corn silage, we've got a lot working against us in regards to the silage acre because typically we're corn on corn, so we got a lot of that inoculum hanging around year over year. We got corn rootworm pressure begin again because of corn on corn, a lot of compaction with the manure and everything else and just the weather conditions we've had, silage wagons pulling through there, everything else. Nitrogen deficiency can happen on any acre. Uh, narrow rows may be something that some people are going to, so we're probably not getting as much air movement through there along with the higher populations doing the same thing. So again, a, a more conducive environment to funguses appearing in the silage. So the main paper I'm going to be working off of is a current invited review that was done by Dr. Cordoso out of the University of Illinois, where he did a really good job of reviewing everything around fungicides for cow feed. Some of the findings that he quoted in there, you can see listed here. Reduced lignin that we know is helpful better, for better digestibility. Improved feed efficiency. Improved fermentation profile that we end up with a better product coming out of the bunker lower fiber levels, higher tonnage and potential for reduced mycotoxins, which is based a lot off of the work that Damon Smith has done in Wisconsin. Here's the first thing on reduced lignin. Uh, this was done at the University of Illinois. The treatments you can see, no foliar fungicide. They did one at V5, one at V5 plus R1, and then one at R1. And you can see the lignin percent as treatments went on down the line with the one, especially at R1, we got a reduction in lignin. Dry matter percent also went down, which means we've got a healthier plant that's retaining more of the nutrients. And then water-soluble carbohydrates are what complement that lower dry matter because they're staying in the plant, not being used to fight off the leaf disease that may be present with that fungus, fungus in the crop. Next one we'll look at, pretty similar setup in regards to feed efficiency. Uh, no foliar fungicide, a V5, a V5 plus R1 and then a V5R1 plus one at R3. And I want to concentrate a little bit here on the dry matter intakes. If you look at the no treatment on treatment one, 23.78, you go down to treatment three, which was the V5 plus R1. That's only, I think you're looking at right around eight, eight and a half, nine pounds of dry matter intake. At 10 cents a pound, that's 90 cents. You look at the milk difference, you get two pounds of milk for 90 cents. That's bad math. So you look at the feed efficiencies moving up from a 143 up to a 166 all the way to a 169. We didn't have an R1 in here by itself, but again, I think we're going to land on where if we do only do one application, we're going to look at that R1. Next one to look at is around silage quality. So where they took good clean silage and intentionally inoculated it with northern leaf blight and then took the samples 200 days later to see what it turned out to be. They had a higher NDF of 9.3 and a higher ADF of 4.4. So again, that fungus has eaten up a lot of water-soluble carbohydrates and leaving behind the fiber. They did the same thing with southern rust. Again, if you look at what happened where there was no southern rust versus medium versus high, we saw that NDF creeping up, ADF kind of creeping up, and then look at the in vitro digestibility. Significant difference where there was no southern rust versus a high amount. So again, the cows are eating things that are giving them the most dense intake. So again, better feed efficiency, just better overall digestibility. We did a trial in 2018 in southern Wisconsin where we took an application at VTR1, two BMRs, two non-BMRs, replicated that six times across southern Wisconsin, and the results are pretty dramatic. You can see from these pictures that it really shows up where we had a BMR with no fungicide was the worst. And if you go down to the diagonal corner, the non-BMR with a fungicide was the best. And you'll, you'll be able to see that on some of these measures here. Uh, 
exactly what you expect. The ones that got treated with Approach Prima had a lower UNDF value. When you look at pounds of milk per acre, huge difference on the BMR, which is what we'd expect. They'll be more responsive to a fungicide than a non-BMR, but we still got a response in the BMR and the non-BMR, as you can see on the milk per acre. So it really looks like when you look at the dry matter content was lower with that fungicide treatment, it again can also add other benefits about things getting too dry during harvest. All the yield and quality parameters were improved. And if you look at the return that we got in this study based on that milk 2006 value on milk per acre, uh, huge returns for that investment of the fungicide, which is roughly 25 to 30 bucks an acre. When we look at going to what we're gonna think around active ingredients, typically we're gonna look at preventative and curative. And the ones, as you can see here, that are listed, these would be preventative in the group 11, the strobins. That's a great choice to look for for active ingredients. Another one that's a preventative is the SDHI group, and the thing that it brings with it is that strong bond to the plant surface that will give you the ability to have more residual for maybe a longer time of coverage. And then you want to make sure that you also include what we call one of the Zoll groups, which is a curative that's very effective if disease is looking to be imminently apparent or already is, at least it could stop new infections too. If we move on to timing, again, we've said, hey, we've looked at R1, we've looked at V5, we've looked at R3, and again, it's 25 to 30 bucks an acre, it's not free. So in general, I think I'm gonna land on where we wanna be at the R1. But if you know you've had problems early, maybe that plant at the very early stage had a lot of insect problems, or it got sandblasted early to where you've opened up a lot of wounds on that plant, whatever it may be, if you think you've already got a problem that may be coming, go ahead and hit it with that V5 for the preventative. But if we're down to one, let's go to the VTR1 because if we can hit that range right in there, we're gonna get the preventative potentially, the curative, and also if we can get that application on right there at that R1, we've got a chance to protect that silk where we may get a reduction in the mycotoxin levels based on some of the work that Damon Smith has done. And again, never include an adjuvant in the pre-tassel or VT fungicide applications. So fungicide ROI checklist, if you want, have to prioritize your fields in, in regards to, I just don't have the money to cover every acre. Look at, here's the main priorities. Corn on corn, if you got a field that has a history of disease, if it's a field that's got reduced tillage, there it has more residue on it. If you're looking at a hybrid that you know really makes great silage, but it's susceptible to leaf diseases, uh, if you know that you've got that crop damage problem with either insects, hail, sandblasting, whatever it may be, looking at a high yield potential field where you're planting higher populations and really throwing the nitrogen to it to where you got a lot of biomass to where it's harder for that air to move through there, or if you're scouting and you can already start to see lesions showing up, uh, irrigated fields are also going to be more problematic because they're going to be constantly wet and then if it's just one of those years where it's wet and humid and foggy with a lot of dew all the time, those are how you would go down that list of knocking off those fields that are the highest priority to the lower priority. And again, at 25 to 30 bucks an acre, when you're looking at 20 to 30 tons of yield feeding 40 to 60 pounds of silage per day, this is some of the cheapest insurance you could ever do. Two and a half to three cents per cow per day. Uh, I just don't know of a better investment on the dairy. I know it's tough with the milk prices where they're at right now, but we've got uh, a few more days that you can still fill out your Corteva prepay and get that discount on your chemicals. So that's an opportunity there. It, uh, deadline is March 13th. So reach out to your Pioneer agency if you haven't done that already to get that uh, opportunity to only spend two and a half to three cents. So again, we know it's something that we need to do for corn silage because of all the challenges with, that we put on that field. Research shows that it's valuable. Look at your active ingredients and the timing of the application. Go to the VTR1 as the primary. If you have to go back to take care of some plant damage, look at the V5 and then go through that list for prioritizing your fields. And to wrap it up, you know, hey, let's feed the cow that corn silage and not the fungus that's in the field. You know, there's over I think a hundred thousand different funguses out there. There's probably only 30 that really 
we know of that cause damage, but it's a lot, right? And that field is being planted with more intensity all the time as far as population and fertilization. And we just know that we are hard on those fields with all the heavy traffic we got. Make sure you're rotating your active ingredients in the fungicide because it's like anything else, just like what we've experienced in herbicides and everything. We've got to rotate those active ingredients so that Mother Nature doesn't build up a resistance to what we're using. And then if it's at all possible, get it on every corn silage acre. Thanks. Appreciate the time. Reach out to your Pioneer Agency in regards to your crop needs, in regards to seed or the fungicide, and hope you have a great 2020. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.